back. So we have some good exercises, new exercises that I'd like to run, introduce today. And um, again, I am barefoot. So just, we could just take a look at what we are going to do. A simple warm up exercise. A good way to just sort of get the whole body grounded. So if you just stand back, stand about shoulder width apart, and just start to roll the shoulders sort of back and forth, perhaps go through this five circles of each direction. So you can always, I'll re I'm recording this exercise part, so I'll send this over to your way. And you can always watch back a little bit closer. If it's, just really think about sort of almost you flossing your spine up with the shoulders. Just, you may notice the shoulders a little tense, especially the those big trapezius muscles known as traps sometimes, just there. So what you can do, you can do just one at a time also, just up and around. Our shoulders and neck are sort of supporting joints. So let's always get, it's good to sort of warm up the neck. So just look over to the right shoulder and then back. Obviously you want to scan behind your shoulder right there. Good. Just do a few up and down ones, so where we tune points up, points down, just a little flexion in the back of your head, up again, down slowly, right? See so if you can spread your legs a little bit wider next, and we're gonna add this hip rotations. Try to raise your elbows nice and high for about 30 seconds. Let's go. See if you can actually turn your head with the body. So maybe choose a, choose a point right behind you, a spot or a picture or light or fixture on the wall. Let's go, 15 seconds. Keep breathing. Transfer the weight into the feet and the sort of hips and the feet working together. Good, five, four, three, two, one, and get right. Let's introduce some multitasking. You might have done this at school. See if we can have one arm going in this anti-rotation and the other one going forward, so like back, and forward, see if we got this. Mm -hmm. This, yes. And let's introduce a little bit of balance. See if we can actually, once you've got the rhythm, see if you can actually stand on one leg, even if you just lift the heel off on one foot, should be fine. There we go. And then change the direction of the rotations with the shoulder. Good. Don't worry if you make sort of jumble it up, it's fine. You can do this on the other leg. I think I'm going both, both hands are going forwards for me. Three, two, one, and roll. Now this is a really good stretch. I'll come a little bit closer so you can see me, but especially when we, either in the sitting position or rounded position, the pectorals, the chest muscles tend to become quite restricted in this and sometimes if you actually press your fingers this sort of it doesn't even need to be that hard you can feel the tightness around the tendon and the muscle so right there so if you perhaps use your fingers sort of press into just around where the shoulder meets the pectoral there press and with your open this is the sort of palm open see if you can almost gently lift up your arm raise it at the back sort of it doesn't have to be really high, but just more opening your palm and just reaching and just apply, keep applying the pressure in your chest. And people say it's actually a good way to release the, it's almost somebody almost giving you a massage or just sort of pressure pointing the particular knots. One more, and then we'll do at least three on the other side. Yeah, just keep they're nice and tall, shake the shoulders out and just try this on the other, other hand. So again, starting from this hip, opposite hip, and turning back slowly, slowly. You may notice one side is 
easier than the other or more restricted than the other, it's fine. Keep your elbows straight. Don't twist the whole body. Just keep hips are straight. And then. Yes. Very, very good. Now, let's just roll the, get into the sort of spinal exercises. We remember we've been practicing some spinal flow exercises. So just remind you, it's not this. It's not a straight bend. It's more of a roll. So just practicing from the head, from the upper, your thoracic spine, and just slowly roll down. Just do this in your own time. Just don't worry if you don't get to the right to the floor. Take a deep breath in at the top and just start to curl down slowly, slowly towards, towards the floor, keeping the legs straight. If possible, tuck your chin in, relax. And just hang in there for a second or so and just roll back up slowly into a standing position, gently coming back up. Roll back. Let's try one more. Inhale at the top and exhale way down. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Back up, inhale a few, inhale and exhale a few times. Very good. Now, just by pointing one one foot up, you will make a big, big difference into the part of the leg will stretch. So quick, quick demonstration of the next exercise. So here's what requires a little bit more balance. You can always have a wall next to you or support. So if you plant one heel on the floor and on the back one, you're standing nice and strong. And here's what I'd like to do. Just reach towards slowly, more from a straight back. Keep the back straight and just reach down. You should feel a nice, nice stretch in the back of the legs known as hamstrings, hold it for two, three seconds and then come back up. So we're gonna keep this moving. And I would suggest actually alternate the legs. Let's see if we can do three on each. So switch your legs and so plant the other heel and then reach, reach out slowly. Be careful with the balance, slowly, slowly, slowly. Okay, we wanna keep it quite dynamic, not holding, not just under five seconds should be fine. While we're still warming up, switch again to the opposite leg, reaching out, breathing out. Not bad. Try at least three goes on each side in your own time. Yeah, slowly, slowly. If you find this really hard, just you don't, don't worry about touching your foot, just hang your body slowly, almost glide on top of your knees towards the shin and come back up. A good practice of that this will be more of a yeah. And yeah, and that's we're gonna raise the heart rate in the, in a minute. So just start getting the feet moving and just sort of warming up the balls of the of the foot, feet one at a time, transferring the weight from one leg to another, almost jumping across a small paddle. One, two, soften the knee. Okay. Now we're going to add some interesting movements, which body does. And what I'd like to think about is twisting or rotating in as he moves. So look at this. So as he land on the standing leg, see if you can turn your body into the towards the corner of this of the wall. So as he hop, twist from here. Hop, take a few goes. It's actually probably better if I would start slowly. So step twist slow. And as you build up your rhythm, your brain also catches up with the movement. You can then add a bigger jump and go into like a more of a dynamic motion where you can actually use the leg. See how that feels. A step is fine too. Great. Keep breathing for another five, four, three, two, one. Remember heart rate is going up slowly. So Shake it up, shake your fingers, shake your hands. Try this where you actually, instead of side now, we're gonna introduce a forward and a reverse step. So more like this, I'll show you this way. So hop forwards and slowly back, step back. So look, one, two. And what we're going to do, add this in rotation as you go into it. Then step and turn, step. 
And that is five of those. Almost you're responding by sort of reaching or twisting fingers nice and open. So like boom, nice. Jump and twist. Let's change the leading leg, perhaps if you've been doing, if you've been alternating, that's great. But otherwise, let's change the jumping leg or hopping leg and twist. It's a quite good, it's a very good drill to practice, practice falling. I know if sometimes I deliberately get people to fall over, but um, responding with the hands and just sort of using the fingers to save themselves, sort of hitting the heads and all like it important body parts which we don't want to damage right with this one you're gonna need a little bit of space just finish up final few if you're doing this a nice kick direct kick so i want you to be very deliberate with your kicks so show a target otherwise if you start here i don't mind look your sort of hip level and anybody can kick there right so but then as you open up your hamstrings and back Become correct, like frame and just go. Wherever your hands are, your, hand, your legs should come up there. Oh. Opposite, opposite, yeah? So, oh. there you go, nice. So if it's your left leg, should be your right hand. Left foot, left hand. Oh, sorry, right, right leg, left hand. Good. Keep going for another 10 seconds. Shoulders are always relaxed, never tense. Four, three, two, one. Ooh, I'm warming up here. Okay, final three. We play this game. It's all about left and right. So think about you looking into the mirror. So as soon as you hear the, the direction, you're going to see if you can tap that like this or like this. So that's my left and that's my right, just to let you know, yeah? Right, get ready. This is gonna last about 20 seconds, nice and fast. You're not standing, you're moving. So you're sort of chopping your feet like this, waiting for distraction. Ready? Right. I love it. Right. A little bit faster, left. It's coming, left. Good, left. Keep moving, keep moving. Right. Right. Left, almost. Right, last one, get ready. Left, great, okay. Well done, time for a sip of water if you need to. Warm up done, we're gonna move on to the main section of the sort of using muscle groups, more strength, introducing some specific sort of body parts as well. Have a sip of water and We'll move on to, I'll introduce the next exercise. We're not gonna use the chair for straight away. I just want you to get you into a habit of sort of your body's being, becoming aware of where to load the weight. So if you can perhaps stand at least hip width apart, so don't, don't stand too narrow or not too wide either. So sort of select roughly about shoulder width hip width part, so that would be, that should be optimal for the next exercise. So it's called squat with the shoulder press. So we actually doing two movements in one exercise. Finishing is the overhead, so, but avoid this. So hips are nice and tall, tall spine, push it with your shoulders. And here's what we're going to add. Drive back, load yourself all the way as low as you feel comfortable. By the way, don't worry if your knees go a little bit over like this. Yeah, it's absolutely fine. Um, so allow yourself to sit back to start with and then lower your hips down as low as you feel comfortable. Guys, we have 60 seconds on the clock. Get set in three, two, one. Let's have fun. Don't stop breathing. Breathe whichever way you like, but either way, if you feel comfortable with this motion, just add the speed way up. So go down slowly and pop your hips with nice power. Yeah. You don't need to go really heavy with this exercise because by introducing the moving fast is 
challenging as it is. So oftentimes people skip the basics and they go into the heavier weights that typically are with the, either have hold the heavy dumbbells or even the barbell on the back. Just keep moving slowly. If you hear any clicks or cracks from the knee, it's normal, I guess. But if you feel any pain, of course, go down to your range. Okay, let's just check the time. We've got this five seconds to go. Four, keep breathing. Three, two, last one. Okay, keep the weights in your hands. Select the weights. Okay, jab and cross. We're familiar with this exercise. Punch into the air, but bring it from here. Look, boom, boom. Yeah, if you've done martial arts, instructors sometimes say, bring it from the hips or bring it from the core. Go, 60 seconds. Oh yeah. Let's go multi-direction, punch down. Keep breathing. Nice full extension coming from your shoulders and elbows. Punch up. Good, keep breathing. And just look how we should be standing. Slide one hip is slightly back, so slightly off stance, yeah? 15 seconds still to go. Punch down one more time. And Looking good. Come on. Five, four, three, two, one, and breather. I'm not sure about you, but my heart rate's just gone up <laughs> quite a bit. So you can stretch your flexor muscles while you're having a short break. Try this palm stretches, hands. Fingers and sort of our feet are one of those body parts that we, as you know, we use it so much that we don't sometimes take, we take it granted for sure that we, and when, when we have a little pain in the finger, oh my God, it, it, it ruins the whole day, right? <laughs> okay, next introduction. We're gonna work on the deltoids, the shoulders, but let's pick up the small weights you may have and, um, you don't need to go heavy again with this motion, but keep it nice control, sort of smooth raise side, and then coming down slowly, kind of perhaps three, two, one. So lifting weights has a rhythm, uh, like music has a certain rhythm, dance has a rhythm, lifting weights also has a rhythm. So don't go like up and down, There's, then you're not going to activate the muscle in the right way. So if, yeah, just go up for one, two, pause, and then three, two, one. If this is too easy, here's what I have for you. So stand on one leg into this sort of side. Off you go. One, two. If balancing, introducing balancing is challenging, just go back on two legs. It's fine. I'm going to do this for 60 seconds. Nice and slow. One, two, up. Keep breathing. Keep your elbows extended. Don't bend your elbows. The slight softness is okay, but it shouldn't be lift. It shouldn't be like this. It should be out there. Your hip line, you're coming down each time. Down front. Perhaps change the standing leg. If you've been standing on one leg, go up on one foot. Keep breathing. Looking good. And final five, four, three, two, one. And okay, here's what we have. Bicep curls, really bicep curls are sort of up, up. It's not the most calorie burning exercise. However, it's a good way to isolate. So let's go. Can isolate the bicep into this motion, just up and down. Keep your elbows, Almost you're tucking a newspaper underneath your waist. Let's go. One, two, one, two. Don't go too fast. You don't have, you can do left or right or both together is fine. And what I want you to do is you're holding an object. I know you might feel a little bit too light that you might used to have doing this, but really go for into a tricep kick. So as you push down, see if you can sort of contract the triceps way down. Go down slowly as you're creating if you're making the weights heavier than they are. Nice full grip around the weights. And then when you go down, see if 
you can activate the tricep, which are back of the arm. So biceps are the front of the arm, triceps are the back, slow. If that makes sense. That's quite maybe a little bit technical by isolating and just connecting, but really get the, try to get your brain to really switch on. To, okay, I'm gonna extend my triceps out with the elbows and then come up slowly. Three, two, one. Final one. One, two, three, two, one. Now, don't put the dumbbells down. Keep, it, keep them up here. You're going to get an extra burn. Wide, wide. And what I want you to do, think about you almost just sort of creating the small loops from the shoulder. So pressure staying in your arms, shoulders. Keep going. Almost you're going. Doesn't matter which way you go. If you go anti-clockwise or clockwise, doesn't matter. We'll do this about 10, 15 seconds on each side. Bring it from the shoulder. By the way, if you are feeling an extra sort of shoulder ache or just sort of sounds, it's normal. But again, if it's painful and, you got, and pain runs through your hand or arm, just have a break. Keep breathing. Hope you change the directions. Good, five, four, three, don't worry, break is coming up, one, and relax, good job. Have a break, have a break everybody, about 30 seconds as a recovery time. Okay, just give you a heads up, um, we are gonna introduce this exercise again. So I could actually bring it closer if you like, and I'll give you a demonstration for the wall squats, which is all about controlling your body into, into the, using support, support comes from the lower body. So going into this sort of, at least the hip width apart and just slowly gliding down. You can ease the door for this. Make sure it's opening the other way, not the, not the direction the door opens, so creating the resistance against it. Here's a name. Let's go for at least, uh, we're going to practice for 90 seconds. If you've gone down, well done. Just final few seconds to prepare yourself. The next three seconds, I'll start the time. Ready, set, two, one, let's go. In terms of the hand positions, I would say, as long as you don't end up pushing your weight into the hips, which actually makes the exercise even harder. <laughs> you can have your hands out there, onto the hips, onto like the waist, across the shoulders, that's fine. But with this one, try to really connect your feet into the floor, your spine against the wall or a door. And channel that sort of focus into the body. If you're not feeling any burn into one minute, once you get into one minute, that probably suggests that you're sitting up too high. The exercise might be too easy for you. Okay. Great. That's a one minute, by the way. If we can go for another 30, 25 seconds extra. Here you go. In the chin. You're still holding. Good job. Good job. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, slowly. Well done. So glide up using the hands as well. Stretch, stretch your legs out, please. Yeah. Yeah. So breather. That's well done, Diane. Good job. Just take the, get this knee hips to flex, so knee flexion, kick the heels. If you're able to actually bring and touch your hands, touch your heels to your hands or your, yeah, that's a good job. Sign of a healthy knees. Yeah. Also gets, gets this sort of burn out of the, 
Nice. Now, this exercise is quite individual. So remember, you can always practice this on your own. I work with people that can do this up to four or five minutes with a really good form. But then they have to start somewhere like 20, 30 seconds. So practice on your own. It's always a good way to sort of build up your strength into the thigh and hamstring area. So let's go into another exercise where we're going to activate the big muscle groups. I want just to do a uh, practice with the sort of exercise we've been doing, almost holding like a press up like a position. And uh, we have a, two options. Option one is off the slightly raised of like a raised sofa or chair where we sort of create more diagonal or, or what you could even do, just if you feel comfortable and if your shoulders feel a little bit okay, go hold a full plank like or press up like position, but we're not doing full push up, just holding this position. It's your decision. I'm gonna go with the right here, just hold this almost like a plank, creating a nice stable back. Let's begin the time in three, two, one, and go. Time to start. Connect with the breath. Now I'm going to give you a set of instructions and try, really try to get it as much as you can. So don't worry if you don't get every sort of left and right. Now see if you can transfer your weight into your right hand, right shoulder, and just tap your left hand across your right shoulder, like almost job well done kind of thing. And do the opposite. So let's see if you could do this without twist, like a turning your hips. So your hips are facing down, locked into the floor. Tap and tap. By the way, see if we can do this for another 20 seconds. Tap. Going. It's important to shift your weight into the shoulder. Final five. Keep breathing. Three, two, one. And slowly steps inwards and just slowly get into a nice standing position. Good. Okay, get your, let's get the heart rate up. Just, if this was too easy, you can, next time you've got to try this on the floor. See how how you'll do that. So look, side step, and then I'm, with the leg that will reach out, so laterally, I want you to, same side of the arm will reach over, almost see, grab, grabbing something above your head, above this sort of shoulder. Ready? Look, one, got a good, good active stretch for the hips also. See if we can speed up. Very nice full push. Good. Speed up. You can actually go into more. But sometimes you see like a martial artist will go with this with some um, cables or they will use some load to push, but doing this with a movement is fine. Reach. And a nice little hop. Another five. Good. Four. Three. Two, one, and hold it there. Little breather. Well done. Okay. About 20 seconds of active rest. Just get the, see if you can control the breath. And we're gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate an exercise that will target quite a small muscle, but it's a part of the body is quite, so next, next one is called tricep dips. I want you to be sitting on a slightly off your chair. Perhaps it's, just make sure it's stable. It doesn't have to be rock solid, but if you were to do this in this position, look how I position the palms, the inside of the palms on the edge. And just very slowly shifting, walking, perhaps taking one or two steps out. But then you have to shift your hips off the, into the air and look. Just controlling this position down slowly. Now, don't go too low. So I don't want you to end up here. Otherwise, it's quite a, if you haven't done this exercise for a little while, you might 
put unnecessary pressure on your shoulders. Just hips are off, and if you just go like a couple of inches down, two or three inches, and then pop yourself back up, right? Try and keep your legs straight if possible. Ready, steady, 60 seconds. Let's go. You tell me at the end of the class how you feel with this. Most important part is we just keep moving, yeah? From the elbow. These are known as tricep dips or body weight dips. Or is he dipping your body or dipping your hips to the floor and then up again? Keep feeling this into the triceps, back of the arms. You must be doing something right. Keep going. Keep your eyes ahead in front of you. Focus for final 15 seconds. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go for five, four, three, two, one. And breathe. Sit back up on the chair or stand. Come on, standing position. Now, you might have felt the pressure into the wrist, which is normal. Just try to do a few little puppy stretches, just gentle pulling the wrist in and then palms out. This way. Wrist takes quite a lot during, not just while the exercise, but also. Every time we go down to the floor, the weight actually loads into the wrist, right? And when the fingers are open, we have a much better balancing point, right? And I sometimes see people go down on the, on the floor with the knuckles. And if you know anybody that's doing it, just suggests a, it's a risk is much higher to, as you put the weight down to this to happen. Yeah, so just this position, although it's quite, Good if you punch, but if you're putting the weight down and the shoulder goes over, it's quite, I've seen quite a few people damaging their wrist or tendons in the wrist by using the knuckles to go down onto the floor, yeah? So easing the wrist, fingers together is always easier. Okay, we're gonna practice. It's enough of me talking. Let's get the, this was your break, by the way. So, um, if you don't have a stick, it's fine. Uh, you can use the wall, chair, all good. Ice skater, and not an easy exercise. So think of perhaps a, like a clockwork around your house. If you have a clock in front of you, take a look at the 12 o'clock, across going three and down for six. You decide whether it's a.m. or p.m., I don't mind. Okay. Holding the balance on a standing leg with a stick. And look what we're going to do. Just a little bent of the knee. So we go down a little bit onto the front knee. Tap. Coming back. So you always return into the home. So look. Tap. Then we're going to go side across for three. Tap. We need to have enough space at the behind you. So two. Tap. Can we? Let's see if we can introduce at least five rounds on each leg. So look. It's important to bend this knee. Don't go. Don't do this. Go down. There's an exercise, uh, one of the oldest exercise, perhaps. It's called pistol squats. And the pistol squats are like going into like this position all the way, yeah, and I kind of back up. But that's kind of how I, how we teach people to practice. Look, one. That's the sort of the first exercise. We're going to keep your posture open. I think I'm approaching my four. Keep the same leg for now. Go for one more one. And slowly, if you feel in control of the movements, increase those to the sort of angles. So reach a little bit further forward, side, and back. Okay, ready. And what are you holding? Let me see what you're holding. Nothing. <laughs> now, if it's if you don't need the support, hey, even better. This is a sign of good progression. Look, opposite leg, let's change your legs. One, two. See how posture is always open, even though I'm going to the side in different directions. 
Christ. By the way, you do not see people go, practice this exercise in a weightlifting area, okay? So, or in the gyms, which will be opening up this week. If you're a member of a gym, you will never see this in the gym, especially in the free weights area or running area. We just get on the treadmill on the machine and we go. But these are really good ways to strengthen the joints, which then you can use to support the to a better foundation on the on the whole body, of course. But that's one more. See how I sort of push your hand, push your hands out, sort of counterbalance the body, so it just looks like as you go there, might find it easier for the balance. It's quite a slow, controlled exercise, so you might want to take your time with this. Well done. Well done, well done, well done. Let's do two more exercises. And the one is going to be targeting the core area. And another one we're going to do is going to be for the lower body, so the hamstrings and the glutes. Um, give me a thumbs up if you have ability to go down on the floor or do you have enough space? And what I'm really asking, do you have enough space to do this, for example, onto the knees slowly? Since it's three of us, we can, I can actually keep an eye on and sort of put all our weight onto the elbow. So just lie in your front, just in a relaxing, I mean, this might not be relaxing, but resting position, yeah? And if you're not sure, if you can't see, yeah? If you can take the screens down, even better. If not, just give your heads up. When you go down, see if you could actually really push your toes into the floor. So almost like a, you're getting a good traction coming from the foot. Don't do this. It's this. Yeah. Heels point back. And yeah, just no rush here. Just take your time. And we're just going to practice. It's not a race. Uh, it's not a competition. But I want to teach you a safe and easiest way to get up, more sufficient way to push the hips up. A lot of times people go from here straight to there. However, it's okay to do this if you've practiced planks many, many times and you, have, you don't have any aches in the back, but it's always better to do this first. Look, roll the hip, push the hips up first. Look, the knees are still on the floor. You stabilize the muscles around the back and then lifting the knees off the floor. Yeah. So I'll give you a chance to practice this on your own now. I'll, what I'll do, I'll actually put this down onto the floor so you should be able to see me. A little bit better. So ready? ready? And give you about 60 seconds just to practice. Ready? So look, push the hips up. Knees are still on the floor. Keep the toes down into the floor. And then go. Very good. And really try and use the whole body, not just the elbows. Of course, toes and elbows are pushing down. But see if you could actually push your forearms into the floor. And even the fingers really press into get a better sort of foundation coming from the coming from the floor. The more more of our body touching the floor, the better the support. Now, I always talk to people: don't overstress the back. It's good to hold this with a good time, of course. But if you notice there's a pain coming into the back, or your hips start to Shake, have a break. Keep breathing. Come on. Keep your eyes down. Don't strain the neck. See if we can do this for another 10 seconds and we're all going to have a break together. Very good. Very good. Final five. Four, three, two, one. Slowly down. Touch knees first. Well done. By the way, if you haven't done this exercise for a little while, so if you've done this for a few weeks ago, a few months ago, and you managed to do this entire practice, that was one minute, 15 seconds. That's pretty good. By the way, um, anything over 90 seconds is considered as a, you know, there's a, like a national norms for population. Anything 90 seconds is an excellent time. Yeah. 
So see if we can have practice that next week. No. Just stay on the floor. You can relax, of course. You can actually sit into it like a child pose if it's easier to relax your lower back. Next exercise is going to be on the floor also. So just are you going to? If you have a small, like a block, or like even like a chair, like a, I don't know if you, my recall, I don't know if you have this in France, but in, in uh, Britain, <laughs> we have this little stool that pops up uh, for short people that want to reach <laughs> things of, in the kitchen or so. So it's, it's actually a really good exercise tool. Um, keep it on a sort of wide, don't, you don't have to have this, but if you can, go grab it now. Yeah, perfect, perfect. And you, Anne's got it, perfect. Okay, just what I want you to do, I think Diane's going. Oh, no, no, okay. Just watch this, I'll show you both ways. Okay, I'll show you on it and off it also. So, you might have done this exercise called hip bridges, and it's practicing this sort of lifting up the spine, but not this way, but I want you to try and roll up in a reverse. So just tuck your hips, you might have done this, yoga or pilates, get the whole hip to lock at the top. By having the box, it makes it a little bit more challenging to lift the hips higher. If you don't have the box, it's fine, just use the floor, as hard as it is, and then roll it up. And here's what I want you to do. This is a trick. When you go at the top, lock your hips together, and here's what we're going to do. Lift your hands up. And see if you can bring one knee up. Stabilize the hip there. And then switch it to the other. The hips are staying tall, same level. And then one. Two. It's quite normal to sometimes actually feel the cramp developing into the back of the legs. So if that happens, just go down. Giving you 60 seconds to practice this exercise fully, let's go. If it's a little bit over, that's okay. Just give me your best. Just, you always want to be scanning your hips. If you notice sort of shake, that's okay, it's normal. But just try to stop the whole hips. Create a nice control. We're marching up, come down after. The one on each, yeah? Lift the hips up first. Yeah. Good. Firm up your shoulders also when you're doing this. So whole posture is involved. Shoulder blades almost touching each other on the floor. 10 more seconds, everybody. Stay with it. Final one. one. Well done, and slowly, slowly down and rest. Let us simply re rest the whole spine on the floor, and this is called windscreen wipers. Look, bending your knees together and just taking the knees side to side. It's quite a nice way to take the pressure from the hips and the back. So shoulders are open onto the floor and just twisting the hips. One. Close your eyes, back to the relaxation into the back. All right. This one is a good way to sort of challenging your sort of awareness and proprioception as well. And it's, it's inspired by martial arts, actually, this exercise. It's called spinal rolls. And they actually gymnasts are great at this as well. They go full flip into this, but look. Just a couple of safety and teaching points. Uh, the most important part of the part to, for us to protect is our head. So in this exercise, because some weight will go onto the head. So avoid taking your head back at any stage, whether we are here or all the way back, which I'll show you in a moment. So little hedgehog, I call this almost biting down an apple with your chin there. Look, hands outside of the knees there. See if we can come up into a sitting position. So have a little nice flowy motion. Chin is in. Oh. So, yeah. 
and try and don't use this sort of jerking technique where you have to snap your back. So it's look slowly back, hips come up, and then boom. Yeah, make sure you have enough clearance behind you so you don't end up hitting your back. So just trust yourself, go back slowly. If your hip, if you notice that your hips want to do this as you come up, that probably means that we need to increase the abdominal strength so we don't sort of push. So keep your good way to sort of not to use your legs with this. Look, hands, stop your knees going forward. Look, here. Yeah. Yeah. See if we can have a little practice. There you go. Nice. I can see Mike. I can see Marie Paul. Diane. Oh, yes. And can we do it? <laughs> okay. No worries. No worries. And here's what I want you to do. Okay. So take the C and reach towards your toe. Yeah. It's a good stretch, also. Yeah. Well done. Well, if you're reaching out, just rest your back. It's a good way. You're actually going barefoot to this. So yeah, just reach over your toes if you can. And it's almost you want to shift your weight from one, one leg to another. Almost you're standing, pushing the whole hip. So there. So building your like tall spine. So look there. Okay. Now. Since we're on the floor and we, we run over the time, it's only a few of us. Final exercise is the promise. This is what we're going to practice, okay? It's a good way to strengthen the hips. But here's there. We'll do this on either on one, lifting the hips off the floor. Some of us might have done this already. So building yourself in this lateral plank, side plank, and can keep the necks nice and stable. Let's get the hips. As high as we can. And if it's too easy, look what you do. You lift this leg, top leg off the floor. All support has to come from the shoulder. Good way to strengthen. I know this is not the easiest exercise, but come down slowly. We, we will have one side stronger than the other. So typically, if you're if you're right footed, you will notice the right side will be easier because it's the hip that helps you to stay up and also the arm too. So let's see how that goes. Just practice another 15, 20 seconds on the other side, knees together. Yeah. I always like to, to give people option when I teach them this exercise, try this on both sides and then tell me if it's easy or hard and I will take it from there. We open up your chest, shoulders are open, and then stay. And if you if you feel shaky or if you don't feel enough strength, it's normal because we don't often we're not often in this position throughout the day. So it's using the different set of muscle groups in here. So just come down slowly and breathe. Nice. Okay. Well done, everybody. Good job. Slowly. I don't. You can stand up whichever way you like. <laughs> you can hop, you can jump, you can roll using the hands. It's all fine. Just take a moment to, to sort of gather 